Good afternoon. Give us your name, sir, your DLC number. Gregory, again, 47265. All right, sir. Uh, my name is Pearl Wise, and to my right is Mr. Freeman, to my left is Mr. Roche. We're going to comprise your panel this afternoon. Uh, let me explain the process to you. I'm going to read some information in the record, and then we're going to conduct an interview with you, starting with me, because I was assigned your case. Uh, you have no visitors uh, today, so after we finish with the interview, we're going to ask the warden to chime in and let us know how you've been doing. And after all the questions have been asked, we're going to give you an opportunity to make a statement. Tell us whatever you want us to know before we vote. Do you understand the process? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to read the information in the record. Uh, pronounce your last name again for me. Egan. Egan. Uh, Gregory Egan. Uh, so seat number is 47 2065. You are listed as first offender. Your offense is forcible rape. Your sentence of July 29th of 2003 is 25 years of permanent correction. Uh, your parole eligibility date is listed as August the 2nd of 2023. You don't earn good time. And your full term date is May the 2nd of 2027. Does that sound about right, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, tell us, sir, why are you in jail? Forcible rape. Uh, yeah, that's the name of the charge. What did you do? Oh, uh, rape, rape my um, stepdaughter. And how that, old was she? 11. Okay. Uh, I, I appreciate you being so straightforward. You, uh, you've taken ownership of what you did. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and this is this is also complicated for her uh, because your stepdaughter has siblings that are your children. And for that reason, uh, when probation parole reached out to her, she thought about it for a while. And then she decided not to participate. That means that means what it means. She had no comment for the day's hearing. Uh, so you understand what I just said? Yes, ma'am. What did I say? What did that what does that mean? That she did not decide not to participate. Um uh, have you completed the sex offender treatment program? Yes, ma'am. All stages, all four stages? Five, seven. Yes, ma'am. What did you learn? Exactly what I did was wrong. And what I should have been doing, ma'am, what I've been doing when I first come to jail is reading the Bible, living by the Bible. Not only studying, but living by it. Now you are? Ma'am. You said you, la you learned in the sex offender treatment classes that you should have been reading your Bible? That's what I should have been doing, yes. My life. Well, with my life. Okay. And what Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6 is, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Mean not to thy own understanding, but all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct thy path. Had I known that at the very first beginning, before I come to jail, I wouldn't be here, ma'am. Okay. That's good to know. And you quoted it correct? You quoted it correct? So you have some medical concerns. What's going on with you medically? I had um, um, aneurysm in 1980, and it even with seizures now. But it seems to be under control. So how long have you been wheelchair bound? Mm, about three years. And how long have you been in jail? 17 years. This in jail, 17 years on this talk? Yes, ma'am. Now, if you were 65, where would you live? And how would you support yourself? 1926 and that street, I would first be on um, receiving disability until I'd be able to find a, a job that I'm able to do. 
Okay. Um, can you read it right? Yes, ma'am. I'm showing that you dropped out of the GED class. A GED? Why? Oh, yeah, the reason I the reason I dropped out of it because I didn't need to go to it from first. So I told him I already had my GED. I graduated. Oh. I graduated oh. from the street. Oh, what high school you graduated from? George Washington Carver on Higgins Street in New Orleans. Uh, what class? What year? Uh, 1977. Oh, class of 1977. Okay. All right. It looked like you've, um, you have not taken living in balance, have you? No, ma'am. Uh, was alcohol or drug use a part of this crime? No, ma'am. You were sober. You were clean and sober. Oh, yes, ma'am, but my thinking was wrong. Yes, sir. We can, we can agree on that. We can agree on that. Uh, and, as, and as a matter of fact, uh, the police report I read indicated that you didn't see the family through a lot of stress. You admitted right off to what you have been doing. Uh, we shall applaud you for that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you do have a, a high need, and, and it says... Uh, substance abuse. Do you take drugs? Do you use drugs? I'm sorry, say it again. Do you use drugs? Oh, oh no, no, ma'am. What about alcohol? No, ma'am. What, the drinking? No, ma'am. Okay. What about marijuana? No, ma'am. They smoke marijuana? How do you manage to not do that? Uh, early in my life, I did. But um, lately, I, I have not lately. She's talking about uh, early in your life. I yeah, thought you was yeah, yeah. Early part of my life, yes, I have. Okay. But uh, it didn't really agree with my body because um, it made me kind of crazy. And going back to, to my other question, you said you were not using anything, drugs or alcohol, when you committed these offenses. Office. No, ma'am. All righty. That's that completes my question. I warn if anything up about write up. You've had six. You have six write up in these seventeen years. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And now your last one was in twenty thirteen. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, what do you do every day? Sitting C L N. That's a light duty. Okay. Bound to a wheelchair, look at TV. What about reading? Do you do any reading? Oh, yes, in my Bible, yes. Okay. All right. All right says, go I'm, ahead. I'm sorry. The Bible said every day at one o'clock. Oh, are you teaching? I'm learning from the past. Oh, no. Good way to spend your time. Uh, what do you want us to know? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Wise. He, uh, as his record shows, he stays out of trouble and stuff, and the rest of his record pretty much speaks for itself. All right. Thank you, Warren. Yes, sir. Yeah. Warren, <clears throat> I see on his annual progress report that it's completed a course called Character Counts, Living in Balance, and Sex Offender Treatment. But I have no documentation that he completed those classes. Can you supply that documentation for me? We can. Uh, you're right. I'm looking at my notes here, and it just says per mental health, per mental health, per mental health. So I had to find some documentation. Mr. Cavalier, can you get some documentation for that to supply it? I'll get them to send you something that, uh, when they can get it. I don't have it in my record. Uh, well, you have to send it to me. Okay. It's it's verified. Okay. This is complete. Uh, I'm looking at it right now, Mr. Roche. Uh, right, the sex offender treatment. He didn't get no specific. Mm -hmm. I'd have to get my mental health staff down here to verify that, Mr. Uh, Roche. Can y'all get, get in touch with Jamie, get him down here, please, and ask him about those three questions. I have no documentation on either, Mr. Roche. 
Yeah, using the C certificate or uh, uh, some kind of verification. Yes, I have them getting the staff. It may it's gonna take a few minutes to have anybody get gather that information though, Mr. Roche. Yes, um, how many total children do you have? Six. Okay. Do you have any contact with any of your children? No. One of, one of my daughters. The one outside daughter? Who I didn't claim at first, me and I have a relationship now. Raven mm -hmm. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Since uh, later. Who are you planning on residing with? I, I know it's in Florida. My sister at 1926 in that. Yeah, that's all the questions I have. Um, Mr. Roche, I could tell you, I, I'm looking at a document here. I don't have certificates, but per our mental health uh, program, a computer program they have. So I do have documentation, mental health input into there that he completed the character counts, he completed living in balance, and he completed the sex offender treatment. So that's the document I have. I don't have certificates, though, to look at. Thank you, Warren. Yes, sir. All righty. Um, no further questions. Okay. Uh, Warren, you have any more comments about it? No, ma'am. So according to your, uh, your medical staff, he's not going to need any kind of extra accommodations, any kind of special accommodations if he's released. He's they have not, oh, I'm sorry. They did not provide that information. Uh, routine follow-up care with his, uh, with his uh, health care provider, primary care provider. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so anything you want to tell us, Mr. Gregory, before we vote? I just want to say thank you all for the decision you're making. Um, God has been good to me, and I'm sorry I let him down. And hopefully, ma'am, I'm turning around right now, doing my best. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Uh, so, sir, when, when I read your case, uh, Mr. Gregory, I, I was very, very concerned about you. Um, okay. I'm just inclined to take a chance on you. My vote is going to be grant uh, at, uh, obtain um, it's, 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 it's necessary in a way you get a suitable residence plan for your sex offender status, the minor victim. Uh, because of your age, your medical condition, and your, and your time period, uh, that is my vote. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Oh, I'm saying it's a tough one with the age of the victim, and uh, you don't have a lot of programs uh, for being in that 20 years. Uh, law enforcement, uh, my vote is to deny. Uh, I don't just don't see the families in support you're going to be making. Thank you, Mr. Roche. I'm sorry, Mr. Roche. I'm not voting for David Why? Is he qualified for? No. No, Mr. All right, sir, you have two votes to grant and one vote to deny because of, of your offense, the nature of your offense, and your crime. You can qualify for two votes, so you can always be denied. It's encourage you to continue to do well and be a fly for the elder boy we care. Our best wishes to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am.